Well, hey, hey there, everybody. It's your boy, Mr. Perry. Here we go. Unit 2, Lesson 5. This time we're talking about uh, methods that return values. Let's go ahead and hop into it. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to pause here really, really quick, and we're going to talk about all of the different classifications for methods. This is kind of good to keep in mind as we start to move forward. Um, we've learned already that there are two main categories of methods. Methods can be non-static or they can be static methods. And uh, we can refer to these as object methods. Non-static methods can be called object methods. And that's because we have to create an instance of the class first. You have to create an object before you can call those methods. There are also class methods or static methods, um, which will contain the word static in their method signature. Um, and when you call them, you don't actually have to create an object of the class first. You can just refer to it by the class name and then the dot operator and then the name of the method. So there are also what are called void methods as well as return methods. And these are sometimes referred to as void versus non-void methods. Um, but for the purposes of our lesson here, it's more useful to think of them as void methods versus return methods. And that's what we're going to be getting into in our lesson today. Um, there are also what are called get methods as well as set methods. Um, and these are sometimes called getters and setters. We commonly um, create these when we uh, write a class file. And the really fancy name for get, method, get methods are called accessors because they give us access to the uh, class's instance variables. And then the fancy name for set methods are mutators, and that's because they allow us to change or mutate the value of those instance variables. So again, just throwing that out there, we've got lots of categories of uh, methods. Um, and today we're gonna be looking at the difference between void methods versus return methods. So um, lessons three and four have focused primarily on void methods which are designed to simply make something happen, um, either print something or maybe do a calculation, or in some cases, we're trying to move a turtle. Um, and so here's an example of a void method, public void chorus, and all it's doing is printing E-I-E-I-O. Over here, we have public void invite friend, and all we're doing here is um, incrementing the value of the number of people we're inviting. Uh, and then down here, public void cancel party, we are changing the um, value of an instance variable party canceled to be true. Uh, but you'll notice that the word void appears in the method signature for all of these uh, methods. So these are all void methods because we see the word void there. And again, all of these methods are just either printing something or doing some kind of calculation or um, you know whatever that happens to be. There's an action uh, that is involved. Now, um, how can you tell whether or not a method is a void method? Very easy, just look at the method signature, geez, oh, Pete's. And if you see the word void in there, then you know it's a void method. And you would expect when you look in the um, definition of the method that it's simply printing something or doing a calculation. <clears throat> Main is also a void method, public static void main. Um, so that's also, you know, interesting to know is, is main is a void method. But uh, the name of this lesson is uh, methods that return values. So we're going to talk about return methods now. Any method where the data type is not listed as void, it is a return method. And these methods return a value to either be printed or maybe used in some kind of calculation, or sometimes they return a value to be stored as a variable. So down here, we've got public string to string, and it returns this string. The pet's name is, uh, and then we're concatenating the name. Down here, public double calculate average uh, takes in two integers. Um, it casts one of them to a double, it performs the, uh, division and then stores it and then it returns this double called average. So uh, these are return methods. And you'll notice uh, that you have to specify the data type to be returned after the word public in the method signature. So again, public string to string returns that string. Public double uh, is going to return a double. 
So pretty straightforward. Uh, void versus return methods. Void methods, again, do things, whereas return methods can produce values. So this is a, an interesting example here. Um, here I'm creating an object of the album class. And then down here, <clears throat> I'm going to call the album, uh, the, the two string method for um, using the object album one. Um, but I need to put it inside a print statement because again, <clears throat> the uh, two string method simply returns the string containing the data for the album one object. If we want to actually see that prints to the console, that needs to be put inside of a um, you know print statement. So hopefully that's making sense. <clears throat> um, accessor methods or get methods, those are methods that return the values of your instance variables. So um, again, if I was using my album method, I'm sorry, my album class example, if I instantiate an object of the album class, I can now, uh, in print statements, I can call the get artist method, the get title method, and the get noom songs method. And again, um, get artist simply returns the artist, so that would print here. Uh, get title simply returns the title, that would print here. Get noom songs simply returns the integer um, containing the number of songs, and that would print there. So get methods or accessor methods are return methods. Now the turtle class uh, also has some accessor methods which you'll be using. Um, so the, the, turtle, um, the turtle class has several um, instance variables, several, several attributes. Uh, it's got a name, which will be a string. It's got a body color, which is gonna be from the color class. Um, it's got the width, which is an integer, a height, which is an integer. Um, and then an X position and a Y position set to zero, zero. Um, what you can do is uh, you can create a turtle object and then you can call the get width and the get height method using uh, your turtle uh, object name Yurtle. And those are gonna return values which you can then store as um, variables. And then from there, you could go ahead and you could concatenate uh, Yertle's width is, and then add that to the width, or add the width to it, which you got using the get width uh, accessor method. And then you can concatenate the height of the turtle uh, to this string here, using the variable height, which you again instantiated using the get height method. Uh, you can also do it like you see down here. You can uh, you can skip this step if you want to, and you can just say Yertle's X position is, and then concatenate Yertle.getX position, and that will return um, that integer, which will then be concatenated to that string. And then the same thing down here, Yertle's Y position is, you can now concatenate Yertle.get, uh, oh boy, um, get X position, and uh, that'll take care of that. So um, again, uh, get width will get you these um, integers, 15 and eight, which are kind of the default values. And you can then, uh, you know, concatenate them. And then if you uh, do it uh, this way, um, yurtle.getx position, that can be concatenated. That's gonna get that zero and just concatenate the zero here. Um, and then get y position, that's just gonna get that uh, integer zero and it's gonna concatenate that there. So accessor methods, give us access to the values of the instance variables for whatever particular object that we uh, instantiated. <clears throat> now, um, get methods can also be used in calculations. So uh, we can look at the rectangle class and uh, all rectangles have a width and a height. So, um, how could I use get methods to calculate the area of a rectangle from main? If I, if I went into main and I created a rectangle uh, object, uh, go ahead and pause the video here and see if you can figure out a way that you could uh, use the get methods, the accessor methods to calculate the area of that rectangle. I'll go ahead and give you a second to pause the video and see if you can figure this one out. I'm going to assume you pause the video. So let's go ahead and look at um, how we could do this. So what I could do is I could say int area equals, 
and then I could uh, use my object name rect1, rect1.getWidth times rect1.getHeight. That's going to take 8 and 10, multiply them together, and store them in this variable called area. And then I could print, uh, you know, concatenate the area is to uh, my variable area. And that would go ahead and return, um, or that would print the area. So that's one way to do it. Um, you could also create a method in the rectangle class file to calculate the area. That's another way that you could do this is just add a method in the rectangle class that says public int get area and then just uh, return width times height. Um, and as long as this is in the same class as the rectangle class, this will go ahead and just uh, return that. So that's another way to do it. <clears throat> and then there are also return methods that uh, will have parameters. And so um, return methods can take in parameters to perform calculations as well. So here's an example of that. Uh, public double calc pay um, takes in two formal param parameters, int hours and double wage. And so the first thing it does is calculate the pay amount um, to be hours times wage. And since we have an int multiplied by a double, that's going to go ahead and uh, make that a double. And it will uh, it'll store it as the double. And then you can just go ahead and return the pay amount. So that's how you would use parameters uh, in a return method. Um, the turtle class you're going to actually do uh, in this lesson, you're going to do kind of a an interesting thing, um, you are going to uh, use the distance formula. You're going to use a little bit of math, um, which will allow you to utilize the get x position, get y position, um, and you're going to end up creating uh, the distance um, from x to y in order to solve that last question. Um, so that'll be an interesting uh, challenge for you, is to apply the distance formula um, and to see if you can get the distance between, um, you know, uh, the, a turtle object and, you know, the origin being zero, zero. All right, let's go ahead and take care of our lesson review. So uh, methods are either void or return methods. Uh, void methods do not return any values and they do not contain the word return in their definitions. Uh, return methods will return a value, either a string, a double, um, an int, a boolean, whatever, uh, to the command that calls it. They are often called inside of print statements or used to initialize a variable after it's been declared. Uh, get methods or accessors will return the values of instance variables for a class file. Uh, the toString returns a string describing the object using its instance variables. And then finally, return methods must indicate the data type being returned to the method header, and then the word return must appear inside of its code block. As always, guys, be sure to leave a question or a comment on today's video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in class.